<clears throat> Hello YouTube world, Trucker Steve here, also known as the Flying Smurf. So, just starting my 34 hour reset here, I'm out about 50 miles uh, out of Reno. Um, coming up on my one year anniversary with GP Transco, figured I would do a video um, about the company. Um, try and put put it out there for for people looking for new jobs or well kind of have to be for gp because you have to have a year of experience before they'll take you but anyway so let's get into the company um real real quick about the only thing i don't like about gp transco um is the cost of the health insurance it's in in my opinion it's it's a little high for the uh, family plan um not that big of an issue. I mean, it was at first when my wife first, uh, you know, when I told her what the cost of it was going to be, you know, she's like, oh, my God, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the pay more than more than makes up for it. And it is good health insurance. So um, I've worked for this is my fifth company. I've been driving since 2012. Um, just to name a couple of the companies that I've worked for, I worked for. K and B Transport, Rail Transport, Sharky Transportation, and USA Truck. Actually, that's all of them. Um, given the fact that I only had the one bad thing to say, I think you got an idea how this uh, how this is going to go. Um, man, I got almost nothing but good things to say about GP Transco. Um, well, let's start off with you know, the number one thing people want to know when they're looking at companies to work for would be the pay, right? So when I started, they were starting guys off at 50 cents a mile. Um, but you got a weekly OTP bonus of six cents and their bonus program, they calculated it weekly. So if you screwed up something, you know, there was always next week. So that was nice compared to most other company. Well, the only other company I ever worked for that had a bonus like that was rail and they they did it quarterly um and it was it was they set it up they set you up to fail with that in my opinion um so yeah um that was how it was when when i started and then just within the last i don't know six six months or so they did away with the with that weekly bonus thing they gave everybody they bumped everybody up um, to 58 cents a mile, which was, I mean, that, that was huge. I mean, an eight cent a mile raise is what they ended up giving us. And now they review you and, and, you know, if you do good every six months, you're up for, uh, a, uh, the minimum is a cent per mile raise every six months. So they still track those OTP standards, which are, by the way, real basic stuff. It's nothing, uh, nothing major. Um, be a, be a professional. Don't be hitting shit out here. Um, use your hours of service wisely, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, basically just be a decent truck driver, nothing fancy. Um, and you're good. Uh, now they do also do like their, their fuel bonus. Um, that's calculated monthly and that's an extra cent per mile for all miles driven for the month. Um, I usually get it every month. It's not not hard to get. Um, so, so so there's that. Now, as for what they're starting guys out, not I I would I believe it's fifty eight cents a mile, um, which to start for starting pay, um, I think is pretty darn pretty darn good. Um, so the pay the pay is good. Um, now the mileage that that kind of depends on what kind of driver you are because GP Transco. Uh, as far as I know, anyway, they don't particularly, if you're the type of driver that, you know, 24, 2,500 miles a week is what you like to do. You know, you don't like to bust your ass too much. They're, they're okay with that. Um, but if you want the miles, believe me, they're there. Um, you know, I've, I've had multiple weeks, multiple 4,000 mile weeks with GP Transco. I'm averaging, I calculated up my uh, mileage over the year and 
um, just over 3,000, a 3,000 mile a week average. Now that's taken everything into account, you know, home times, home weeks, all that. So I've actually taken quite a bit of time off and I'm still, I'm still, my weekly average is uh, 3,000 and change. Um, the other big thing, at least to me, um, they don't micromanage us over, over here. They expect, they want experienced drivers and they want drivers that they don't need to babysit. Um, you know, you don't, there's not a bunch of, uh, you don't have a computer in here with, um, you know, 60 or 70 canned messages to where, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm at the shipper, I'm at the receiver, I'm loaded, I'm unloaded, I'm rolling, I'm in transit, I'm fueling, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. There is none of that. I mean, you do your logs, obviously, but as far as uh, doing loads and stuff, they use uh, the Open Road app. It's real simple. There's just a few selections on there. You accept your loads, you're in transit, and you're delivered. And that's all you do. Now, I communicate quite a bit with my fleet manager, um, mostly through text messaging on the phone, um, just with ETAs and, you know, especially when I'm not stacked, when I don't have a load stacked behind the one I'm on. Um, you know, I, I, I keep him informed so that, you know, he can better, um, you know, start looking for another load for me or, you know, stuff like that. But um, routing, you route yourself. Um, there's only a couple of roads they don't want us running. The I-90 Skyway around Chicago and there's a stretch of the Pennsylvania Turnpike that now that one um, they will let you take in certain circumstances but as a general rule they want you to avoid it but they give you the addresses for your pickups and deliveries uh, they don't uh, micromanage your fuel stops they don't micromanage your routing uh, they don't micromanage your clock um, if you're the type of driver that some guys don't like to take 34s when they're out here on the road um, they're okay with that. Um, you can run, you want to run eight hours a day every day and never take a 34, they don't care. If you're like me and you like to turn and burn and get your mileage in for the week and take a 34, they're okay with that. The, the, the key there is communication with your, with your fleet manager dispatch. Um, that's the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll get into is dispatch. Uh, in, in my experience, I've had nothing but good good experiences with dispatch. Um, I have never like been just sitting around waiting on a load. Um, I've never had that happen. My fleet manager, oh my God, he's a... I've had some good ones too. And he's still by far the best dispatcher I have ever had. We work real well together. Um... And one of the cool things was um, when I ended up with him, uh, we had a pretty lengthy conversation. He had a lot of questions. He wanted to know what kind of driver I was, how many miles a week I like to get, uh, what hours I like to drive, um, where I like to drive, um, where I don't like to drive. I mean, you name it, he wanted to know. And it's been my experience that uh, GP Transco will go out of their way to try and and cater to how and where you like to drive um, as much as possible. Now, anybody who's ever driven a truck will will know, you know, sometimes that's just not possible. You know, I'm not saying you occasionally won't get something you don't like or have to do something you don't care for because that probably will happen. But it's been my experience that's pretty few and far between. But again, the key is you got to communicate. Communication is key. And if you have good rapport with your fleet manager or dispatch, which you should, because again, as any driver will tell you who's been around for a while, a good, a good, your, your, your dispatcher can make or break you, man. They really can. So you know, my advice to anybody, not just drivers for GP, but if you're having problems with your with your dispatcher, man, you need to handle that. You need to be communicating with the company. And GP Transco, um, you know, one of the other things I really like, they keep the workload on their fleet. 
their fleet managers and dispatchers extremely well. It was, and I, it's unheard of to me. The last few companies I worked for that I actually knew um, the, the workload of the uh, fleet managers was anywhere from 25 all the way up to 40 guys. Um, so, you know, that's why with a lot of companies, you know, you could be waiting for, you could ask your, your fleet manager a simple question. You know, you need an answer to it, but a simple question, and it might be 20, 30 minutes before they get back to you. I have never experienced that either with GP Transco. When I call my dispatcher, hell, I can't even remember ever being put on hold. Um, you know, a couple times he's been away from his desk or something. I'll leave a message, but usually within 10, 15 minutes, he's calling me back. Um, so th there's there's that. Um, man, they, they just, they leave me alone. You know, they let me do things the way I like to do them. You know, I like to, I like, I've been driving since 2012. Um, I'm pretty set in my ways. You know, I like to start my day um, one, two, three o'clock in the morning and be looking to be shutting down, you know, three, four o'clock in the afternoon at the latest. And for the most part, I tend to get away with that. Um, you know, sometimes because of delivery appointments or pickups or whatever, that can be a little tough, but man um we're doing more and more dropping hooks gp has picked up a lot more dedicated freight which at first was was real i don't want to say sketchy but i i took issues with it because i was really used to i got when i first started with gp my average my average run was right around 900 miles with quite a few loads that were pushing the 2000 mile mark or over and i got real comfortable with that of course as any driver i think would um, you know, so it started to get a little concerning when I noticed, oh crap, five, 600 miles, you know, five, 600 mile loads, which are still pretty good loads. And considering most of those loads now that we have that are, that are dedicated, there's a lot of drop and hooks there. Um, and I've gotten used to those, those loads. You can still get your mileage in and, and more often than not, um, easier than I could before. Um, you know, and I'm still getting like right now, I'm on a, uh, I picked up in Al Algona, Iowa, one of our dedicated customers, Snap-on Tools, great customer to haul for. I absolutely love them. Um, picked up there all the way out to uh, Carson City, Nevada, you know, 1,700 miles plus a, I think I did had 140 miles or so. Um, so great, great load. I usually get, um, I, I, I live in Texas, so they don't have any dedicated stuff down there. I'll leave out of the house. Um, more often than not, it's one of two things. I will either leave out of the house and head um, somewhere on the West Coast. A lot of times, we do a lot of stuff in the Reno, Carson City, um, Nevada area. So I'll often get a load straight out of the house up here to, up here to Reno and then straight from Reno over to Chicago which is where their, their terminal is, just south of Chicago and, and uh, Joliet, Illinois. Um, and then, of course, a lot of their dedicated freight is in that Midwest kind of hub there. Um, and I'll run back and forth for a week, sometimes two. Um, usually I'll get, I'll get a nice long load somewhere in between to offset, you know, the, all the running around on the dedicated stuff. Um, but it, man, it, it's working out great. It's working out fantastic. Um, so I'm real happy with that. Um, I'm real happy with everything with, with GP. This is, uh, you know, some people might watch us and go, oh, this guy's got to be, they must be paying him for this. I'm just a driver. I am just a regular truck driver um, that, like I said, I have been, I've skipped around a little bit. From, you know, USA Truck, I started with absolutely horrible all of eight months. I lasted with them. Went to work with Rail Transport for a year, and they were pretty good back then when I started with them. And then I ended up leaving trucking altogether for a couple of years, mainly for family family reasons, and decided to come back. Um, went, went to work for a small outfit out of Illinois, Sharky, and Sharky was really good. Um, Again, for family reasons, I ended up moving 
um, to an area where they didn't run. And I ended up going back to rail transport. And by then, they had become a training company and everything had changed. And they, it, it was just horrible. I, they were, they were, they were awful. Um, I ended up with K&B, who K&B Transport was okay. It, it, they were okay, although they work you to death over there. They do have guaranteed pay, which was nice, but believe me, you earn it with K&B. Um, and now here I am, all these years later, I fully intend to finish out my driving career with GP Transco. Um, that's how, how good I, 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 I feel about this company. Um, their, their equipment is almost all brand new, um, predominantly freight liners. They are getting some uh, Kenworths, and they're still running Volvos, although I don't know for how much longer. Um, but yeah, no internationals, almost all, all new, 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 new stuff. Um, the terminal itself is, is, is relatively new, immaculately clean, even the yard. Um, they just recently expanded that too. Um, no, no issues there with parking, clean. Um, the driver facilities are, are excellent, always immaculate, never had an issue. Um, all the way from the bathrooms and showers to they have a huge kitchen area. Um, if you want to cook Thanksgiving dinner at their terminal, it would be easy to do so. They have pot, all the pots and pans and every anything you would need to cook big, big freaking huge meals. Um, they've got a gym, half a basketball court, um, four loaner vehicles. Um, if you want to, you know, go shopping or get something to eat or do whatever. Um, so, so there's that. Oh, I forgot about the pay. <clears throat> the, de the detention pay for GP Transco is as far as I know for company drivers, probably the best in the, in the, in the industry. It's $25 an hour after two hours, period. No questions asked. You don't have to do anything funky. Um, all you got to do is write your in and out times on your bills, send your fleet manager a picture of it, and you get your detention pay. Whether the company collects from the shipper or the receiver, whatever the case may be, the, you as the driver get, get paid. Okay. Now, if you have an appointment time, a set appointment time, um, it's two hours after that appointment time. So if you show up, you know, a couple hours early, you, you're not going to claim detention pay when your appointment time starts or something like that. But um, I will say in, in a year's time, the number of times I've even been in a position to collect detention pay, I could count on the fingers of one hand. It's, it's not very common. Um, but every time it did happen, I got paid. Um, Usually, uh, it's a. And I think every time that happened too, with the exception of one of our dedicated customers, I actually got a layover there. Um, but everything else has been like a broker load to either get me out of the house or, or to get me home. Um, don't happen very often. Our our dedicated customers, like Snap On, is is awesome. Snap On is awesome. Pa Paperworks, depending on the facility, that's our biggest customer. They're pretty good. One of their facilities, I'm not going to name it, is uh, um, not the greatest, but it's still manageable. Um, so that detention pay is, you know, I know a lot of guys who I, I, I talk to who, depending on what carrier you run for and what you're hauling, your wait times at docks, you know, can vary wildly. But it's a big issue for a lot of guys because they're so used to getting held up at docks and stuff. If you get held up at a dock with GP Transco, you're going to make $25 an hour on detention pay. I, and they'll guarantee it, and I guarantee it too. So um, the respect fact factor for GP Transco, I give them a 100% five-star rating. I have never felt in any way, shape, or form dis disrespected at all. Um, in fact, they, they go out of their way to, 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 to treat us with the, with the respect we deserve. Um, case in point, the cameras on these trucks, uh, they do have cameras. Um, the outward facing the uh, dash cam, which if any driver has a problem with that, I, I think they're crazy because those dash cams can save your bacon. Um, that's running 24 seven, whether you like it or not. The inward facing camera, which is a deal breaker for a lot of drivers, myself included, 
they give you the option. You can have it on or not, okay? If you opt to have that inward facing camera on, they give you an extra two cents a mile. If you don't wanna have that camera on, there's no questions asked and they give you a cover to put over it. You can tape it up, do whatever you want uh, if you're paranoid. Um, they don't force you, okay? Now, if you're a screw up of a driver and you got a bunch of incidents out here, you're hitting shit, you're, uh, you're speeding in construction zones, running stop signs, whatever, doing stupid U-turns, stuff like that, they might, in, they might go ahead and say, well, we want that inward facing camera on. We wanna see what's going on in the cab of that truck. But uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, you don't have to have it, man. They give you the choice, which I don't know of any other company that's doing that. And to me, that's a huge respect thing because number one, they listened to the drivers and did something about it because they found out there was a lot of drivers that didn't want anything to do with that inward facing camera and went, oh crap, okay, how do we accommodate this? We wanna have them because we can save on our insurance. Well, let's offer them some incentive and and not force the rest of them that's huge and that says a lot about the type of company they are they listen to us they seriously do guys i've never gone to them you know i don't have a lot of issues but uh i i honestly feel if i if there was something wrong um that i could go to them and i have a pretty good um, i feel i would feel pretty good that it would get resolved um Every home time I've gotten home when I asked with the exception of one and that was because the broker forgot to set up the appointment at the delivery and they wouldn't take me at all, which didn't really matter anyway. I was 40 miles from the house. I went and sat at the house till, until the next day, went and delivered and did, and did my home time. That's been the only hiccup for all of the home times that I've done. Um, I've taken extra days off. They don't care. Um, man, I... I like I said, they uh, if you're the type of driver that wants to just be given your work and be left alone, GP Transco could potentially be the place for you, man. Um, owner operators too. They have we have a lot of owner operators, and I don't know what that's like. I've never done it. I know Dave from Smart Trucking. Um, if you go to YouTube and look up Smart Trucking, that guy Dave, he uh, has highly recommended GP Transco for owner owner operators. So there's that. Um, oh yeah um, the whole going back to the whole re respect thing the other thing I'm hearing a lot of complaints from a lot of guys is, is their uh, company or fleet manager or dispatch or whatever the case may be is forcing them to do a lot of split resets let's talk about that for a second GP Transco has never forced me to do anything. The few times that I have done split resets um, was by my choice. And it usually went like this. I was low on hours, talked to my fleet manager, and he's got a, a load lined up for me. Um, and talked to him and he's like, well, you know, if you don't want to split the reset, I can find you something for tomorrow or you can split it and go do this pickup and have this load. Nine times out of 10, well, actually 10 times out of 10 with GP Transco that, that I've run into that scenario, I've gone ahead and done it just because it's been a kick-ass load. So, I mean, small price to pay, right, for eight, 1,800 miles as far as I'm concerned. Um, let's see, what else is great? Um, the trucks are governed at um, 67 on cruise, I think 66 with the pedal. Um, they do have a smart pass where you can do 70 for 15 minutes. You get 15 minutes of smart pass. It resets every four hours or something like that. Um, not a huge deal to me. Um, 67 miles an hour is, um, sure, I'd like to be able to do 70, um, but it's, it's, it's okay. Um, let's see, what else? What else have they got? that we could talk about here. Uh, guys, I, I'm running out of, I'm running out of stuff. Um, so what you can do is like people who watch this video and are thinking about working for GP, man, if you want to talk to me, 
um, leave a comment and I will get you my email address or whatever. Forgive me, I'm a bit of a caveman. Um, I'm not real good at this technology stuff. Uh, otherwise, I would, uh, whatever they call it, link in the description or whatever. But um, if you leave a comment and you want to talk to me, um, I will be more than happy to talk to anybody who wants to come to work for, for, for GP. Um, I absolutely love it here. And like I said, the, the only negative thing I, I can say about them is the cost of the health insurance. And man, if that's all you got, Night to, to as far as trucking goes, man, you're doing pretty good, right? You're doing pretty good. So, I guess that's it, guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enjoy my 34. Maybe go get some breakfast here. Um, enjoy the weather while it's nice. Um, you guys be safe out there, man. Keep on trucking. <laughs>